Okay, so last time I showed how to set up debugging with Renode. This time I will show you debugging on hardware and how to set it up. So let me build the firmware. Okay, it's all built. Alright, so we'll go to edit configurations. <clears throat> And underneath here, you can see <coughs> that I have my firmware image here I'm using the bundled multi -art architecture GDB. I'm only loading when I update. I have a Seger <coughs> J Link probe, so I am using the Seger J Link. GDB server at the command line. I'm use it's a USB <clears throat> device that can go 50 megahertz, and I'm using serial wire debug. And my carrier board is a STM 32F405. It's the RG T6, I believe, which is the 64 pin package. <clears throat> and you know, obviously, I'm building before I run, and I'm building all. So that's the setup for that. So I still have my debug for Renode instance, right? So that's still there. <coughs> and that's still set up. The hardware doesn't need a, a startup delay like Renode does. The hardware runs immediately. Um, so. so real quick, we'll step through in Renode and <clears throat> we'll just step over to make sure that I didn't do anything bad and blow up the firmware image or crash it or anything. <clears throat> so we get in here. Um, I'm not going to go into real detail for this here because I'm going to step over it. Renode can't, even though Renode can load the peripherals, um, <coughs> Renode can't simulate everything so it's gonna do a bunch of step over here and it'll get into here right and then it'll go through its counter yada 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 so it didn't blow up in Renode <coughs> so what about the hardware well I'll switch to the hardware instance <coughs> now the hardware the hardware will show us our peripherals so this should start up uh you know what it's not connected i gotta i gotta turn it on uh man that was stupid all right so we'll turn it on <clears throat> yep it's on now all right that's my bad so we turn it on load it up step into it and disable let's clean up Clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up in case uh, it's a software reset. <coughs> so <coughs> now we'll go in, in the control register and turn on the high speed external. And it worked. Yep. So uh, probably a lot of this is going to work. Uh, so I'm just going to let it run. <coughs> continue and we should stop there so this windows box is hooked up to my um, EEZ Benchbox 3 power supply and and my LaCroix oh uh, well actually the the bench box is over the Ethernet um, but this this is over serial connection to my LaCroix scope so let's see uh, what we have so we enabled, I enabled um, Master Clock Out 1, which is on uh, GPO port A, pin 8. <coughs> and <coughs> the code, the code in here actually enables it by default at 168 megahertz system clock and advanced high speed bus is 168 and then 
the peripheral bus one is at 42 megahertz peripheral bus two is at 84 so <clears throat> it should be at you know 168 megahertz for the main clock but what it looks like is <clears throat> on the scope since we can't spit out 168 megahertz on the pins uh, we can only spit out half of the maximum clock speed on the pins so we get is 84 megahertz on average <clears throat> 84 megahertz it's a little bit of delta on the sigma uh, you know the sigma delta between the low and the high but it's not bad for you know a crap clock in installed on a you know cheap dev board so that's not so bad <clears throat> plus I also don't know what temperature it is in here right now um, but yep so we got what we wanted we are debugging the per we could see the peripherals in real time if we wanted to um, as we're changing them and then uh, <clears throat> here we are again and we'll count and it counts faster than I can hit the switch to continue which is what you should expect at 168 megahertz um, you know it's just going to keep counting <clears throat> let's do another refresh on this bad boy So, yep, so it's the same thing. It's staying around about 84 megahertz. So, now we can turn. Now we can turn that off because I don't need to run that. <coughs> so, yep. So, <coughs> the code runs in the simulator. It does not explode. And the code runs on the hardware. <coughs> and does not explode. Which is cool. I, I, I like when the hardware doesn't explode. It's less stuff for me to buy and fix. So you may be wondering why the clock gets initialized here. Well, <clears throat> gotta copy everything from flash into RAM to set the variables. You gotta clear the block, <clears throat> the the uh, BSS RAM. It's like blocks starting at something. I, I don't remember. <clears throat> what BSS really stands for. Basically what this is, is it zeroes out any ra uh, RAM variables that weren't set when you copied the values from flash into RAM for those variables. <clears throat> Configure it at maximum clock and then any static constructors in C++ and then any regular object constructors get constructed. And these, this, these will run faster than they would have if uh, I left it at the default uh, clock of 16 megahertz so you know if that would be slow and then go into main and then <clears throat> inside main whatever you're doing in main here will speed up drastically so um, yep hopefully that was informative and helpful for something for somebody so good luck see you next time